This is Q&A with Prof. A, the Ibato K. Dokbato Medical Physiology Review Series for Students. The question thrown to us today is, Prof. A, what are the commonly available tests to assess renal function? If you can recall that the functions of the renal system are to filter, reabsorb, and secrete. To test for filtering ability of the kidneys, we usually look at albuminuria for anatomic integrity and serum creatinine for physiologic function. Normally, albumin is not filtered in the urine because of its relatively large size and negative charge. Presence of albumin means that the epithelial podocytes are damaged leading to loss of sieving ability and charge of the filtration barrier. But albuminuria per se does not always correlate with severity of renal disease, unlike serum creatinine. It just connotes a damaged filtration system in the glomerulus. Caution on false positive dipstick results in highly alkaline urine and in highly concentrated or dilute urine. We usually look at the serum creatinine to assess GFR. It is convenient, reproducible, and cheap, though it is not the perfect metabolite to assess filtration. A decline in GFR increases serum creatinine. A low serum creatinine may be misleading in patients with reduced muscle mass. It is also an insensitive index of kidney failure. Due to compensatory hyperfiltration of the uninjured nephrons, serum creatinine will only increase if there is already at least 50% reduction of GFR. It is a late marker of renal failure. In addition, there is tubular secretion of creatinine by the proximal tubule, which increases progressively as renal disease worsens. In certain instances where it will be spuriously elevated from muscle breakdown, ingestion of cooked meat, drugs that decrease tubular secretion, and high concentrations of compounds can be falsely detected as creatinine. While researchers are still looking for that elusive gold standard endogenous marker to measure GFR that is accurate, available, and affordable, we just have to settle for the bronze standard, which is serum creatinine. Do not forget that in all settings, the serum creatinine and albuminuria should always be related to the body surface area of the individual when calculating for estimated creatinine clearance and total protein excretion. We all know that 100% of glucose is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Presence or absence of glucose in the urine reflects proximal tubular transport. If an individual has glucosuria, always check for serum glucose. If elevated, we all know that it's just an overflow of glucose because the proximal tubule can only absorb as much. There is no defect in the tubule. But if an individual has normal serum glucose level but has glucosuria, this means that he has an inherent proximal tubule defect in glucose handling. So if you have a tubular defect, you have normal serum glucose, but you have glucosuria. The urine-specific gravity is a practical parameter to assess the kidney's water reabsorptive process. It provides a general sense of an individual state of hydration and may provide clues in patients with serum sodium disorders. Quantitatively, we compute for the free water clearance, where a normal negative value means water reabsorption or urine concentration. A positive value or urine dilution means water excretion. As you can see, with low serum sodium and you have a dilute urine, this is a normal response to water dilution. However, if you have low serum sodium and you have a concentrated urine, then consider a problem with your ADH axis. Bear in mind, that the gold standard in assessing water handling by the kidneys is to compare serum osmolarity with urine osmolarity or the serum sodium with the urine specific gravity. So if you have a low serum sodium, USG or urine specific gravity should normally be also be low. If the USG is high, 
or free water clearance is negative, something is wrong with your ADH axis. The urine pH reflects the acid-base handling function of the kidneys, specifically secretion of hydrogen ions. This graph will tell you the normal relationship of urine pH with your serum bicarbonate. If your bicarbonate is low, your urine pH should normally also be low or acidic. Otherwise, if it is alkalotic, consider defects in renal acidification. So if you have low serum bicarbonate and your pH is alkalotic, consider renal tubular disorders. Quantitatively, we assess acid-base balance by computing for the urine anion gap. The urine anion gap is an indirect method of measuring ammonium chloride, which is a byproduct of converting ammonia to ammonium by hydrogen secretion of the intercalated cell. It is normally negative in states of low serum bicarbonate. A positive urine anion gap means that the kidneys are not producing ammonium chloride. Therefore, they are not secreting hydrogen ions in states of acidosis or hydrogen excess in the blood. So if you have low serum bicarbonate and your urine and ion gap is negative, consider a normal response to acidosis. The urine output is the easiest way to assess kidney function. It is normally in the range of 1 to 2 ml per kilogram per hour. But, but remember that the urine output should always be compared with the individual's fluid input. Do not just compute for the output. An individual may have normal urine output only to find out that he is in a state of positive fluid balance. On the other hand, an individual is oliguric because his fluid intake is also low. It is recommended, therefore, to compute for daily fluid cumulative balance where a slightly positive to zero balance should be normally achieved. So if your fluid input should always be equal to roughly your urine output. For more high-yield concepts in renal physiology, don't forget to click the subscribe button.